Hey, welcome back. In this video, we are learning how to find the inverse of a two by two matrix. So first of all, if we have a letter, let's say the letter A to denote a matrix, then the inverse of that same matrix is just going to be written like this with an exponent of negative one. Now this is really similar to if we take the inverse of real numbers. So if we have, an, for example, just the real number four, and if you wanna take the inverse of that, basically you divide one by that number, or you can write that with a similar notation of four to the minus one. So basically this is kind of the same thing. Um, if you've watched my other videos, then you'll see that I, I did videos on like a scalar multiplication of matrices, matrix addition, subtraction, and matrix multiplication, but there wasn't a video on matrix division. So this is as close to that as we're going to get. Now basically the definition of the, the inverse of a matrix is is that if you have a matrix, let's say matrix A, then there exists this statement that is this matrix A times its inverse is equal to the identity matrix. And it's also equal to uh, if we reverse the order, so at the inverse times the matrix itself. So if you have an expression where you have one matrix times another, and you can switch the order of those, and they're both equal to the identity matrix, then that means that the matrix A has an inverse, and it's A to the minus one. So for a two by two matrix, the method that we're going to follow is if we have this matrix, uh, and it's just got four components, A, B, C, and D, then the matrix inverse, which we write a to the minus one, is going to be equal to one over the determinant of a times this two by two matrix, which is d, a, and then negative c, negative b. So this works for every two by two matrix and it will reveal if we have an inverse or not. Basically, if the determinant of the matrix is zero, then this is going to be undefined. And uh, basically that means that we don't have an inverse for the matrix A. Um, if that's the case, then we would call matrix A singular. And uh, we there wouldn't be a statement like this that we can construct because there is no inverse because the inverse is undefined. Now, as long as the determinant of the matrix is not zero, then this is always going to give us the inverse of A. In this part of the expression here, the two by two matrix, you'll notice what I did is I just switched A and D on the main diagonal, and then I didn't switch B and C, but I just put a negative sign in front of each of them. So technically this is called the adjugate of a two by two matrix, but if you're not familiar with that word, then it's uh, you'll, you'll be okay just memorizing what to do here, switching the main diagonal and putting negatives on the other ones. And otherwise, then you can just use this expression to always find the inverse of a two by two matrix. So let's go through one example here. Let's say that for matrix A, it is going to have these four elements that are just one, two, three, and four. All right, so when we go to take the inverse of this, we need to have an expression that includes one over the determinant of A, and the determinant of A is one times four minus two, times three. And then we just plop in all of these values here. So A goes in the bottom right corner. So we put one and four, basically switching the items on the main diagonal, and then just keeping these ones the same, but putting negative signs in front of them. All right, so if we just simplify this, we have one times four is four, minus two times three. So four minus six, we are going to get, this is just going to reduce to one over negative two times the stuff that's in this matrix. So we have four minus two, minus three and one. And if we just distribute this in, uh, four times negative a half, the first element here is going to be negative two. And then we have negative two times negative a half, that's going to give us positive one. And then this guy negative three times negative half, that's going to give us positive 1.5. And then one times negative a half, that will be negative 0.5. All right, so this matrix here is equal to the inverse of A. And now that we have that, we want to check that both of these statements are, are basically going to equal the identity matrix, which is a matrix where the main diagonal is ones and everything else is zeros. So let's go ahead and uh, let's change colors here. Let's check this first of all for A times A inverse. So that's going to be uh, one, two, three, four times the inverse. And when we apply matrix multiplication, the first row and the first column element here is going to be basically the, the dot product of the first row and the first column. 
And then the element in the first row and second column is going to be the dot product of the first row and the second column. And then the element in the second row and first column is going to be the dot product of the second row and the first column. And then the last element here is the dot product of the second row and the second column. Okay, so we can simplify each of these terms a little bit. And you're gonna see that when we do that, uh, this does reduce down to the identity matrix. So this is equal to just the capital letter I. All right, so if that works, the other thing that we wanna try is multiplying the inverse of A to A itself and just switching the order of that. And we are hoping that this is going to end up with identity matrix as well. And that'll show us that we've done this correctly. So let's rewrite them. And then we can expand out each of the elements from the matrix multiplication. And when you simplify that, we're gonna see that this also reduces to the identity matrix. So that is just a good check that you can do if you have the time, uh, basically to check that A times A inverse is equal to the identity matrix and that A inverse times A is equal to the identity matrix. Um, but if you don't have time to do the check, you know, if you're just racing through a test or something, then basically you just have to follow this expression here and providing that you don't uh, make any mathematical errors along the way, then this will give you A inverse. And if it doesn't exist, then that means that A basically does not have an inverse.